All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Let's get it started. All right, another day, another dollar. And I got an interesting one coming to you. Um, <clears throat> there's a, some news updates, and I know that there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast that are not from California. I wish I actually knew the percentages. I wonder how much it is from California versus other states. But, I mean, I can go look at the analytics and see all different, you know, from all over the world and all states in the United States. But uh, <clears throat> anyways, uh, so I don't want to bore people that are not from California, which I don't think it does because I've even got feedback from people saying, hey, you know what, um, even though I'm not from there, I like, I like hearing that's California stuff. So what I was going to cover in this one is the 2022-23 highlights of the season. And these numbers are super interesting. So I don't know how many of you <clears throat> that are from California, and I push you to do this, is become a member of the California Waterfowl. But on this episode, I'll be talking about the the California Waterfowl <clears throat> newest one that came out, the fall edition, 2023. And uh, uh, the numbers, uh, the hunter harvest statistics from type A and B. So it's not private land and it's not type C refuges, which aren't regulated. Um, no one works a check station out there. In fact, type B, they don't even do that either, but they do have people that come open the gates and stuff like that. But anyways, type C uh, is not even part of the statistics, which it doesn't really matter because you don't have to put in resis for type C, but type A and B um, you can put in for. So anyways, um, that, that's not really what I want to focus on this one. I did want to put this out there, though. Um, I, I think I told you guys about the duck dinner on the last episode, and I was telling you how we met, me, Thomas, Travis, uh, went to dinner with about seven or eight other guys, met some great, great guys, and some guys that have some positions, CWA, and just duck hunters in general and stuff, some pretty cool stuff. But anyways, John Carlson, which is the pr uh, president of the CWA, <clears throat> was there, real nice guy, and I just seen on page uh, six, so if you guys don't get this magazine or you're not a member and you don't get it, you really should because I, I, they're one of my favorite magazines and probably because it's from California, but there's just stuff that's really relevant to what we would want to know. So, anywho... <clears throat> He is, John Carlson is retiring um, uh, as of summer 2024. So next year, this will be his last year. And so what's cool about John Carlson Jr. is that um, right here, he started as a president in July 2010. So, I mean, he's been doing this a while. So you got to give props to him for staying in that position for so long. And I guess before that, he was doing, um, uh, he worked 13 years for the California Department of Fish and Game um, I mean, now it's known as the Department of Fish and Wildlife. I still call it Fish and Game, but um, he's he was there for 13 years, and then went to um, uh, CWA for well, next year will be 14 years. So, anyways, he says time to move on, and he's enjoyed it. And uh, I didn't know that. I didn't even realize that at the dinner, but I guess Kevin said that he did mention it. But I was sitting across the table from him. So, anyways, we want to say we appreciate all the work that he's done. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes. I got a whole two pages of this info that's very intriguing, even if you're not from California. Um, it's it's very interesting. So we'll see how long this takes. If this takes about 15, 20 minutes, we'll just call it good, you know, around the 25, 30 minute mark. Um, I got a lot of episodes to record today. Trying to get some guests on. It's it's kind of been tough because my schedule has been so goofed up that I can't schedule other people because I don't like just doing myself. But I have got a lot of feedback that you guys in, enjoy them just as much, which surprises me. I'm sure there's a lot of you that don't, but I have got feedback from people that do. So I'm doing the best I can putting content out. And I'm trying to just not do it where I'm blabbering, but I'm, I'm either helping somebody, helping people with their first season, with dog work, with decoys, gear, or stuff like this, giving you really good prevalent information that I think you'll actually like to hear. So let's go ahead and, and get into it. So this is the hunter and harvest statistics from, like I said, type A and B state wildlife areas and national wildlife refuges, which give us a, a good look at how the season went. So the 2022-2023 season is uh so we'll go over first the birds per hunter per day so this is what i i thought was awesome so um 
we had the best statewide season long average in 36 seasons. That is insane. Because I feel like in the last several years, we've had drought and all that, but we've had some years that were phenomenal, and we've had some unbelievably terrible years for lack of water. But this is the best statewide season-long average in 36 seasons, meaning birds per hunter per day, and that was 2.65. That's crazy. That means every re- if you took every the conglomerate, conglomerate of every single refuge in California, type A and B, put them together, which is a lot, and I should have got the number how many there is, Put them all together um, and then take every hunt day, which is usually it's either Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, some are Wednesday and Saturday, no Sundays, some are Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Okay. But you take just those two or three days a week that you're hunting for the whole season, um, they average 2.65. I mean, it's basically like you can go out there and know you're never going to get skunked. Now, that being said, there's plenty of skunks. I know that, but it's just a fact of knowing like, man, I could almost go anywhere and I had the chance of a 265. It's pretty crazy. <clears throat> now, we had only the 10th highest number of waterfowl harvested, which I don't, they said only. I don't know why they said it like that because it almost makes it sound like that's not that good. But the 10th highest in in uh, all these years, that's pretty good. You know, like that's really good. So that's pretty interesting. But then it says, here's the thing where there's still a decline of duck hunters, but the ninth lowest hunter numbers, the lowest since 1994. That's crazy. That's it's pretty sad. <clears throat> and um, anyways, it says duck validation sales dropped 6% for the state, but refuge hunters numbers dropped 12% compared to the 2021-2022 season. I can tell you why. I think that is, and I'll lay money down. This is why it is for two reasons. One is the fact that um, the clubs did not have water that year, the 21-22 season. So they were coming to the refuge. I know that for a fact because I know the pulse of the refuge system because I go there. And when I was there... My wife decides to clean this window when I'm recording a podcast. <laughs> Unbelievable. All of a sudden, I just almost half get scared. She totally threw me off track. Unbelievable. See, this is what happens when you have a home studio. <clears throat> um, but the pulse of the hunters was that um, every, most of the guys I talked to standing in line or coming out of the refuge or going in, I'm telling you, majority of them were saying they're club guys and they couldn't have their club because they weren't going to have water till the end of November or in December. So all those club guys came to the refuge because there was a lack of water, which made our refuge numbers jump up. And it made it really tough that year because there was a lot more guys hunting. Um, the number two reason, uh, man, where was I going to go with that one? I had it. I should have written down that water getting sprayed on my window right by my head. Totally distracted me. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> I need to have Sarah back on. Everyone got a kick when me and her would get on here and chat, for lack of a better term. Um, talk on it. I knew that was going to throw me off. I'm trying to think of the other reason, because one was the for sure the water. That's why the numbers went up. Oh, here's the other reason, <clears throat> I believe, is because we had floodwaters. And so... Last year, we had floodwaters. So anyways, last year, the 22-23 season, all those club guys were back in their clubs, okay? Uh, the other reason was is because we had floodwaters. And I know this was only towards the end of the year, you know, December, January. But all of the guys, including myself, that if we normally hunt a refuge that day, which I really didn't miss refuge days. I kind of gave the floodwaters a break. But um, I, those guys, I know a ton of guys that usually hunt refuges did not hunt. They were hunting flood water so that takes a big number down especially probably in the sack valley i would assume so <clears throat> anyways that's my two cents worth why but it is pretty cool to see this chart that being said if you look at this graph it goes from 1990 to 2021 you can see we would bounce between two bird average and one and a half per hunter per day 
And then it in 2000, like 90, here's the funny part. Like in 98, which is when we had floods here in California, it jumped to over two. Then it dropped way back down for a couple years, down to almost one and a half. Then around 2007, eight, which guess what that was? Another wet year. One of those years and there was another wet year. It jumped to almost two and a half. And honestly, since then, it has bounced between two and two and a half. And this year's the first year in, like they said, 36 years that it's jumped above and been a record that it has. So it's 2.65. So a little bit of information there. Um, let's move on. Let's look at reservations. How hard is it to get a reservation? This It's funny. They put, they put in here a golden ticket and literally say on it, golden ticket. And I said, to draw a resi is like a golden ticket. Literally, it is. And what's funny is it doesn't even mean that you're going to go shoot your limb or do good. It's not a guarantee. You may not even shoot a bird. That's the funny part. But they did say last year it got a little easier to get a reservation. In 2022 20, and 23, you had a 1 in 27 chance. Think about that of getting a general reservation. And that's, again, that's a conglomerate of all of them because if you look at some refuges, you have like a one in six chance. Some refuges you look at, you have a one in 193 chance. I've been putting in for this one specific refuge for 14 years, 15 years. Um, I've never got drawn. And honestly, I don't really anticipate it i i think once in my life i might get it or you know maybe once or twice <clears throat> but i don't really plan it's not i just do it to do it right but the chance of you getting is very low especially when they don't let a lot of hunters in but anyways it says it did get easier um you have a it's a 3.7 chance <laughs> this is funny when you look at it like this it sounds horrible you have a 3.7 chance of getting a general reservation compared to with one in 29 the season before Resi applications, including MI blinds, which are uh, uh, handicap, and use slash military weekends, fell from 1.12 million to 1.01 million, a 9% drop. Man, that's a lot. Fun fact <clears throat> the three hardest refuges to get a resi for were, and this is normal, this is how it always is Little Dry Creek, Kern, and Howard Slough. That's that's been that way for years. The top species harvested at each in 22-23 season was the northern shoveler shocker. Same as that Grizzly Island, the easiest place to get a resi. So there you go. If you want to get a resi in California, put in for Grizzly. Um looking at this here. I really think half the time it's either nor northern shovelers or greenwing teal that is the easiest and the most common bird to harvest. Let me grab a swig of this coffee. Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay. So, huh, that's interesting. Huh, that's funny. Because the top species that was ki killed at Little Dry Creek, Kern, and Howard Slough was Northern Shoveler. That's funny. Because down here, when we go to top birds on our straps, it says green winged till was our number one species for everywhere, for the whole state of California, as it has been for 29 of the last 36 seasons of record keeping. See, that's what I thought because I was like, is that really true? Because I know green wings. I mean, yeah, we have a lot of shovelers, but really green wings are the plethora of birds. So 29 out of 36 seasons has been the green winged till. The mighty shoveler attained its greatest percentage of our refuge harvest ever at 25%. White geese, lesser snows, and rosses were at their second highest as a percent of harvest at 5%. Lessers were the number one bird at SAC National Wildlife Refuge. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, uh, next up is Sassoon was banging. So Sassoon, now let me say something here. Can I say something? I'm reading this stuff off because this is what it's in a public magazine, and that's good. If you want this information and you don't want to share it with nobody, then you know, buy it yourself and not say nothing to your buddies. But it's like, I shouldn't even probably be saying this right now, but it's like, okay, people, huh, I don't know if I should say that or not. 
I just had something to me recently happen to where a guy got right in my face, basically. He was nice to me at first, real nice, actually. Got right in my face and started pointing his finger right at my chest, saying, I mean, right in my, I'm talking, when I say my face, I mean like in my personal space. Like there's a bubble around me. I don't like that cross except for my kids and my wife. Maybe, maybe bubbies every once in a while. <laughs> my brother. I'm just joking. What I'm saying is when you, I don't really know somebody, you don't come in that zone. Like when we were in the military, that was one thing that almost drove me the nuts is we would be, there's a term they had that we'd be stacked on top of each other in line for the chow hall for everything we did. We were literally chest to back. I mean, stacked. And I used to drive me nuts. I just don't like that. I like my personal space. This guy gets inside my personal space Puts his finger like this and is pointing at my chest, looking me in the face and said, don't you be putting videos out of uh, you hunting in such and such place. That's what he said. I go, excuse me? Like, he caught me off guard because he was so nice to me. Then went off on me. <clears throat> and another guy can confirm that I was there that heard it. And I go, what? Like, excuse me? Like, I caught me off guard. He said it again, even a little bit more worked up. I go, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never once put a video out from there. And I wanted to say, and if I did, uh, none of your business really is what I want to say. But, I, you know, I, you guys will be shocked how much I don't put out, honestly. Um, if you think, if there's anybody out there listening to this that thinks I put out too much, there's a lot I don't put out. I promise you. I only put out 11 hunts. Let me, let me tell you something. I put out 11 hunts last year. 11. Do you know how many times I hunted last year? How many days? Which is not a crazy amount. There's a lot more people that hunt more than me. I hunted 47 days. 47 hunts. Okay? I put 11 videos out. Do you not think there's a lot of stuff out there missing? And then this guy to get in my face and say that to me? And he said it the third time. I know. I recognized it. I knew right where you were. And he was saying the spot that I have never done a video from ever in my whole life. And I said, you can... And now I got mad by the third time he called me a liar, basically. I said, I said, you can think whatever you want to think. I said, you can do whatever you want to do and say whatever you can. And as he was telling me this, he was saying we. So his little buddies, his little cronies, were all getting each other worked up saying this is what I'm doing. Because he kept saying, we, we know where you were. We know where you were. I go, you can think whatever you want. I literally said this. You can think whatever you want and say whatever you want. You're wrong. And he's like, all right, yeah, put it there then. And like, try to give me knuckles after that. After he called me a liar three times. I'm like, dude, get lost. Give me a break. You know, but <clears throat> that being said, I'm glad he had the nerve to say that to my face because most people won't say that. They just get mad and go on, uh, you know, like refuge forums and run their mouth and stuff. It's, it's ridiculous. But <clears throat> anyways, yeah, a random stranger comes up to me and does that because he recognizes me. It's like cracks me up. But again, I respect him for saying that instead of like, uh, <laughs> you know, like give me the stink eye. Like I've had so many different times. I won't say a word. And then I'll get a Instagram DM the next day. I seen you out there. I seen you out there. I've seen where you were going. You need to stop putting videos out. It's like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Good thing you seen me. Why don't you say that to my face? You know? I guarantee you if you did, we'd find out that we have a like-minded and we believe the same way and the same things. That's what I've always said for years. Like, why don't you just come talk to me? You know, if you do if you do have a problem, I promise you by the time we're done with the conversation, more than likely you're not going to have a problem with me anymore. And we're going to shake hands and who knows? Maybe stay in touch. I've had that happen before. I've had guys invite me out after they badmouth me and a year or two later after they seen who we really were, invite us out to hunt. That's just, you, you can't judge people by what you see. It's not always, it's not that I'm different on camera than I am in person, but you're, people, I do too. We like create this image in our heads of like who people really are on camera, right? People that are on movies and TV. Some guys you'll meet in person that you watched on a movie, right? You meet them in person, a movie star, and they're a complete jerk. You meet another guy, and he's like the most sincere, down-to-earth person. That's how I feel that you would feel about me if you met me. So, anyways, well, I'm going to get off that tangent. I just thought that was so insane. Like, <laughs> like 
pointing their finger at my chest and getting mad, literally mad. And I had never done anything from there. That's the funny part. So anyways, so I guess I said all that to say this is people are saying we're showing spots and they know we're at, which they don't. I can't tell how many times I got comments saying, oh, you're here in this pond. I'm like, I'm not even in that refuge. What are you talking about? Like, and it makes me laugh. And it's kind of nice that they think that because, yeah, let them get sidetracked and think they know where I'm at. But the reason I say that is because you get in a magazine like this, and I'm not bashing it at all, but you get in California Waterfowl, you get in Ducks Unlimited, you get in Delta Waterfowl, and I've said this before, they tell you where to go and where the spots are and how good people are doing. Like, if, if we're blowing spots out, how is that not blowing stuff out? Seriously. How is that not blown out? They do it in big game hunting, too. <clears throat> Numbers will go up in an area in Montana on this area in this zone and they start talking about it how frustrating do you think that is for other elk hunters you know where they're literally giving specifics i've never ever done that i've never done it ever i barely even say the state and people get mad that oh you'll say that you 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 know you won't say the state either it's like man i'm do your research i mean if you really want to study look at a video and pick it apart you might be able to figure out where it's at you know but like here <clears throat> it's talking about Sassoon was banging so, I mean, Sassoon is huge, right? And it's not in range for everybody, but it just it's just kind of funny, you know. But anyways, it says Sassoon not only had its best season long average ever, but starting in November, every leg of the season was its best ever. That's pretty cool. Um, for other regions, had their best late Decembers ever. So the grasslands... In December, I guess it looks like, or late, well, it says late December. It says Grasslands had a 3.54. That's nuts. Because there's multiple refuges. That's crazy. And I mean, I experienced it. I know how good it was. Sac Valley was barely under it with a 3.44. They were on fire. And I never got to get up there really this year, unfortunately. And I really want to. I had all the plans in the world to do it, but didn't get to. Because I would look at the numbers every week and I'm like, my goodness, I need to get up there. But why? If it's close to where I'm at home, why am I going somewhere else, you know? Tulare Basin. Look at this. Tulare Basin had a 3.91. So what's funny is Tulare Basin had a be better average than Grasslands or Sac Valley by far. YOLO had a better than the Grasslands and Sac Valley. YOLO had a 3.67. And then it says Northeastern had its best early November 3.38 and early January 2.42 averages. Wow, that's shocking. See, I didn't see. I haven't really read through all of this. I kind of skimmed through it. That's interesting because Northeast Zone is has a pretty tough time in January because it's so much snow and the cold and the temps and all that stuff. Huh. That's cool. All right, so the next thing they talk about in here um, is Mallard, Gadwall, and Pit Pintel made up a shrinking portion of our harvest. So let me look at this graph real quick. So it says drought and land use changes have reduced numbers of California breeding ducks, the Mallard and Gadwall, and Pintel, which tends to reduce harvest here. That's kind of sad. See, what's the thing is the numbers were up, the bird numbers in general, but it says all three, so Pinto, Mallard, Gadwall, well, all three were near their lowest percentage of our harvest ever. That's not good. Mallards hit bottom in 2021 and 22. So, yeah, it's sad. When you look at this graph and you watch, it's weird because Mallards were, this is what's crazy, from... Nine, like let's say I'm gonna say this is probably around 85, 1985, to about 2008. So from 85 to 2008, mallard harvest percentages were 15 to 25 percent of the whole state. We're literally down now to basically five percent. And it's been that way from 2009, 2009 to now to currently has been between five and 15%. And really, man, that's terrible. Like it's, what a terrible thing. And 
the harvest for Pinto said it's at its fourth lowest. I don't know why, though, because we have no shortage in Pintels unless they're doing that, which that's not even a fair assumption. If they're doing that because we're counting where there was two bird limit and one bird limit for Pintel, I mean, that's kind of a skewed number there. But anyways, that is the highlights for this season. Um, it's really cool, though. Like, if you guys do get this magazine, it's the fall 2023 edition. And what they do in the fall, they always put out this page of numbers for every single refuge and where, you know, it is and all that. Um, they do type A and B, and that's the, all the ones that we were talking about. So, actually, let me count them for you. I'll tell you right now how many there is. For just type A and B, that's not including C. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Three, one, three, two, three, 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 four, three, five, three, six, three, seven, thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. That's a lot. That's a lot of refuges in California. Just type A and B. <clears throat> that's from Northern California to Southern. But uh yeah, there's some really good numbers, and this is good information to have if you're a California hunter. So I, I urge you to become a member of the California waterfowl. Um I think you'll really like it, and I think you'll really enjoy their magazine. Honestly, it's it's my favorite. And it's not just because it's from California. It's just because, um, like, it's just the stuff they put in. I mean, it's kind of, there's not a lot of waste of space with dumb stuff or whatever. You know what I mean? That's, like, really, really, really good information. And, again, I haven't even finished looking at it. I'm going to have another episode after this one talking more about some of the stuff that I wanted to bring up to you, which is going to be about pintails and the shocking amount, number of pintails they think that we could possibly go to and how it would change things. So stay tuned for that, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.